Hello friends, welcome back to DIY Guitar Making. I'm here in the shop. I got the wood stove going because it is cold outside and gotta keep the shop warm. Um, plus it adds a little bit of ambiance, which I like. But anyway, I'm gonna take you around the shop here and talk about what I have going on in the shop currently, some of my current projects, and most importantly, what are the two, not just one, but two guitars that I'm going to be building next. And we'll talk about the various aspects of those guitars that might be interesting to you guys as builders as well, so that you guys can learn something here. All right, so let's uh, get up and uh, I'll go show you. Let's go check it out. As you guys know, I love Hearn hardwoods. I get 70% of my wood I, I probably get from Hearns or more. On this particular trip, well, we'll talk about this redwood top in a little bit. That's cool. Tons of Sitka spruce. So I am stocked up on Sitka tops for a while. Honduran mahogany neck blanks, which the stiffness to weight ratio of Honduran mahogany is basically makes it the gold standard for guitar necks. Although on one of my guitars that I'm going to be talking about in a minute here, I won't be using Honduran mahogany. So that'll be interesting. Not to mention, I got loads and loads of black walnut, which is actually, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I don't want to get too far uh, away from these two guitars. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Then I also got just the elephant in the room here, literally because it's like the size of an elephant, is this countertop that I'm making for a friend here. It was really something that while I was at Hearns, he came and stopped by because he wanted my help in picking out the wood for his countertop. We chose Ovencaw, which is awesome, beautiful wood. It is used on guitars. I haven't used it on a guitar, but I can see why uh, it works after using it to build this countertop. I can see why it would be a desirable wood for guitars as well. Uh, it had you know, great workability, super dense, very hard, hard to indent with your thumb. I think it's um, 1300, somewhere in that ballpark foot pounds as far as Jenka hardness, the Jenka hardness scale. So all those things make it a pretty ideal wood for guitars actually. But anyway, I didn't use it to build a guitar. I am assembling this countertop, you know, large stuff like this, I'm not really set up to do. In fact, he had to buy these three clamps in order for us to be able to assemble this. By the way, while I'm talking about this, if any of you guys could tell me who are general woodworkers, what do you call this joint? So I'm not sure what it's called, I'd like to know, but it's the joint that we've been using for this. It's like a ton tongue and groove joint, but um, it's an insert, an oak insert on the inside rather than the tongue portion being cut into the uh, male side of the wood. Okay guys, so here is the plan. Over this winter I'm going to be building two guitars. The winter generally is my off time as far as teaching, teaching the, the guitar build classes and all of that. So that's a great time for me to develop new models and things like that. And that's what I'm going to be doing with these two guitars. I'm going to be building a Florentine Cutaway Dreadnought out of this Claro Walnut that I have right here. Look at that. And uh, as far as the top, I'm just going to be using some of the Sitka spruce that I have over there. I'm going to pick out a really good sample of that. And uh, I'm also going to be building, dun dun dun, a bird's eye maple guitar. Like all over bird's eye maple. And this is going to surprise some people, especially if you've been following the other videos. Because I literally said that I would never build an all maple guitar. That I thought they were stupid and ugly. And anyone who likes them is just a... A lesser person. Uh, those are not all things I said, but nevertheless, I did say that I was not going to build this, and now I totally am going to build this. And basically, it's just because I went through my stash and I found uh, a nice set that someone had sent me. Actually, his name is Kurt, and uh, so thank you, Kurt. Someone sent me this set because they it was a parlor sized set of maple back and sides and yellow cedar top and he wasn't going to use it so he figured he would just ship it out to me which is really really cool of you Kurt so thank you very much while I was at Hearns I got myself a nice bird's eye maple neck blank to match and the plan is to do maple bird's eye maple back and sides 
bird's eye maple neck, bird's eye maple fretboard. And then a beautiful redwood top. Look at that. I love these like pinkish hues and then the, the dark streaks that run through it. Really cool. I love redwood. And redwood has great tone, by the way. It really does, at least in my experience. So that's going to be cool. I think also the all that white, it's going to be nice to have it offset by a, you know, co contrasted with a very dark top. And then there's going to be ebony appointments. So ebony binding, ebony binding around the fretboard as well, because I need something to contrast between the bird's eye maple on the neck and the bird's eye maple on the fretboard. So yeah, this is going to be a 13 fret to the body parlor guitar with a Florentine cutaway. And this is going to be a dreadnought with a Florentine cutaway. And um, there's lots of other decisions I'll have to make along the way. And I'll carry you guys along in the process with me and explain them as I go. And uh, the reason why by the way, I want to do two Florentine cutaways, aside from the fact that I just really like Florentine cutaways. But also, I am going to use this opportunity to develop a Florentine cutaway course, which I can add to my course catalog. Um, I already have the Building an OM Acoustic course and the True Oil course, as many of you guys know. But I'd like to have a cutaway course for you guys as well. These are paid courses I'm talking about. This is not the stuff that is normally just on YouTube that you guys are watching. Um, that's more of the vloggy stuff that I'm doing right now. So, you know, the process of building this, I'll be vlogging as well and sharing that with you guys. But at the particular portions where I'm doing the aspects that pertain most to the cutaway, I'm going to uh, combine those into a course, which you guys can get from ericshaferguitars.com later, once it's complete. Okay. I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, I did mention I had a whole shitload, I guess I'll say, of black walnut. Let's go check it out. I got tons of it. Um, so this is all black walnut here. Let me pull out a sample of this. So this is actually going to be for the uh, student guitars for the hands-on workshops in the fall and the spring. I still have some rosewood guitars that will be used for those, but we will also be using a lot of black walnut. All right, so here's a good piece of black walnut for one of the student guitars. And actually, I'm not even gonna say a good piece. This is a, a typical piece, because actually all the pieces I got kind of look like this with really nice figure in them. And the reason I want to point this out to you guys, because this might be interesting to you guys and might help you guys out a little bit if you're still using rosewood a lot, I noticed over time that the actual samples I was getting of Rosewood were just getting quality-wise worse and worse. I was accepting more imperfections in the material. While I was at Hearns, I looked at some alternatives, and with Walnut, I could spend the same amount of money on these tops and get way better quality. I could actually pick through them and get the absolute best examples of this wood that I could find with zero imperfections uh, and to me that is more valuable to me getting a good quality back and side set than getting a back and side set essentially with um, species that ha a species that has good brand recognition right like rosewood like everyone likes to hear rosewood uh, especially because of Brazilian rosewood, which East Indian rosewood is not Brazilian rosewood. But anyway, although Brazilian rosewood, I sometimes like to call it Brazilian stump wood because it suffers even more so from the same problem where it was once this great wood, and hey, if you can find old uh, examples of it recovered from something, then great. But, you know, any rosewood that you get today that isn't reclaimed is basically you're picking from the dregs, right? It's the worst example of what was once a great species. So why put yourself through that just to have the name, just to have rosewood? Walnut is a great, uh, a great backwood. It really is in every way, tonally, aesthetically, 
and hey it's domestic and abundant and that's not a bad thing anyway so yeah if you guys are going to be in the spring workshops uh there's some, some of the rosewood sets are mixed in there but there's also walnut um, students do have the option if they spend more money to select uh to choose different sets that perhaps um i go back to herns and i i pick up for them but in general most students just go with what, what i have waiting for them here because i don't know if you guys know this but i put a lot of my energy into sourcing this material and sourcing it well so that you guys get good stuff all right that's all i got to say sorry for the rambling i'll see you guys in the next one bye for now merry christmas happy kwanzaa and um, Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Bye-bye. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.